Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Chaotic Entertainment. I'm your host, Dan, and I'd like to take a minute to introduce you to my new ranch. Welcome to Harmonious Farms, where human and pals can come together in peace, harmony, and cooperation. Here, we're all equal. Some of us are just more equal than others. And we work together for a bright, beautiful cause. To make me the most powerful, affluent vagrant this island has ever seen. How? Through industrial labor, inhumane conditions, and minimal pay. It's what our supreme leader would have wanted. In case you haven't figured it out yet, today, I'll be reviewing the early access title Pal World by Pocket Pair. If you haven't seen this game yet, you may have questions about what the fuck is going on on your screen. Questions like, Dan, why does your Pokemon Center look like a sweatshop? Because it is. Pal World is a lot of fun. It's an open world sandbox of sorts with base building, monster catching, and exploration. There's also a story. Don't ask me about it. I haven't read a single one of these data logs in the 70 plus hours I've spent playing this game. The game's premise is relatively straightforward. You are an adventurer who crash landed in this strange place full of strange creatures. You're alone, you don't know where you are, and if the player who created you is a member of my audience, you probably look like this. So naturally, you do the only thing you can think of. Arm yourself and open your very own Build-A-Bear sweatshop. But before you can create jobs and opportunity for the magical wildlife, you've got to make a character. If you've ever wanted to roleplay as a Pokemon trainer on anabolic growth hormones, you're gonna have a great time. You don't have any stats or skills you can adjust when you start, which is kind of a mixed bag in my opinion. On the one hand, character building is my favorite part of any RPG. It's a bit of a missed opportunity to not have any sort of build options. I found myself in meditation on Saturday being completely overwhelmed by visualizations of the Joker. <laughs> Especially in a game this big. On the other hand, not having to allocate stats gives me plenty of time to figure out which slider gives me a Joe Rogan torso. When you spawn in, you're a member of the bottom class of society. An undesirable. You're so broke and downtrodden that the nearby homeless people actually pity you and try to give you help. The solution? Get a stick, get some rocks, and get to crafting. It's a dangerous world out there. The reptiles have evolved into venomous succubi, and the chipmunks are strapped. If you think this club won't be enough to protect you, congratulations! You heard reptilian succubi, and your brain's still turned on. Not like that. If you're going to stay safe, you're going to need help. And there's probably nothing written in the Geneva Convention about starting interspecies conflict. This should be when you begin to realize what an absolute ride you're in for. Just like in Digimon, you need to soften up these critters before you can seal them away in a personal containment unit. But if you don't have a starter creature, how are you supposed to- and here, we begin to see how our lovely ranch was founded. One by one, several of these pals were persuaded to join my team and help build my facility from the ground up. My little pals were so excited to get to work that they even helped me bring their friends and family to the ranch. But don't call it slavery. That's a terrible word that's bad for morale, and it's a great way to get your factory investigated. We use the term indentured servitude. It worked great for my ancestors and nothing bad ever happened to them. But before we can put all these lovely critters to work, we need to improve our base. And this is where the PAL World gameplay loop begins. Your time in this game can be summarized as follows. Level up, upgrade your base, explore further to find more PALs. As you do this, you'll find yourself traveling further and further out from where you once started. And it is extremely important that you catch pals during your travels, as that is the fastest way to level your character. Each time you kill a pal, you get a small amount of experience. Each time you catch a pal, you get a lot of experience. And if you catch 10 of the same pal, you get a fuck ton of experience. Or, you know, keep hatching them until you accidentally get 10. You're going to be catching a lot of these creatures. By the time you're eight hours into this game, your Pokedex is going to look like a bad dragon catalog. You need a variety of pals who can perform different functions. Some pals are extremely useful at your base. They'll have a wide variety of workstations to choose from, or be assigned to. Either one is perfectly acceptable. 
Everything from farm plots to forges, assembly lines to firs and pines, and chilling an icebox to mining rocks. And, just like in real life, if you want to keep your workers from rioting, you need to provide some benefits to their job. Let's take a nice look at my facility. Here we have a dimly lit lounge area that my pals actually can't use because they can't climb stairs. But hey, it's really pretty to look at. When our employees are tired from a long day's work, they can make their way over to the dorms, which is just a large communal bed space full of random straw I left on the hard stone floor. This is our breeding farm, where we promote our workers bonding and getting to know each other. We also have a pair of hot springs that can randomly teleport you into nearby trees. And this, this is our food bucket. These are the main areas your pals will be spending their free time in between shifts. Otherwise, you'll find them operating one of the many stations you've probably built around the area, assuming they figure out how stairs work. And as you level up, you'll unlock more of these facilities, or, in some cases, considerably better versions of the ones you already have. You can get so many structures and workbenches that space can start to become a concern. You know, until you realize that you can build vertically. Luckily, this game won't punish you for not getting your setup right the first few times. Everything that can be built can be unbuilt for a full refund of the spent materials. Listen, working on my farm is a matter of life and death, which I define as the gang of raiders that will be at my doorstep sometime within the next three minutes. Every now and then, enemies will come together and launch an assault on your base. Sometimes it's feral pals. Other times it's pals rights activists who have come to bravely maul the ever-loving shit out of my animals and leave them in broken heaps on the ground. If you want to keep the unwashed masses out of your base, you have several tools at your disposal for this. Weapon emplacements, bear traps, bigger bear traps, malfunctioning Roombas, and automated IQ tests. Enemies will come and not only attack you and your pals, they'll attack your structures as well. If you're building your houses out of wood, I hope you're ready to watch several minutes of your life disappear the first time a flame enemy sneezes near you. Also, let's get back to the pals for a moment. Don't let these stats deceive you. A level 50 pangolet is worse at watering crops than a level 1 pal from a higher tier. In the long term, these are the stats for your base that matter, but they're not everything. For example, with a level 4 fire skill, you'd think this guy would be the best possible creature to have near my forges or my cooking areas. Except my man here is so thick, so brick, and so unbelievably fucking stupid that he can't move around the base without getting stuck on everything. But you know what? That's fine. Pals can either be useful in the kitchen, or in the rest of the world. Some give you passive bonuses just for being in your party, others can be used as mounts or provide fire support. This adorable little bastard does both. And if they can't provide the firepower, they can become the firepower. Trust me, they love it. Don't question it. It's a lot better than the alternative, because in Pal World, having a random stranger force a saddle on you is the least terrible thing that he can possibly do to you. Pals are often made of viable organs and crafting materials, both of which you need to survive and progress through the game. And sure, catching the pals gives you these materials without having to kill them, but spheres cost precious metal ingots. Left clicking costs about 0.3 seconds. Let me make something clear to you. The island is not your home, and it's gonna fucking make sure you know that. If you aren't prepared, the locals are gonna storm your base and they're gonna politely ask you to leave. And the longer you play, the worse things get. So, with that in mind, let me give you a few quick tips for surviving in Pokemon Arc. First, just like in real life, headshots make your problems go away much faster. This becomes especially true once you throw away that bow and start loading Buckshot instead. Second, mining ore sucks. Or at least, it did. If you never want to go on mining trips again, go to these coordinates and build a base. Then, go to this micro desert and start abducting several of the mentally stunted Bowsers you see wandering around. They drop shitloads of oil, and they'll Beyblade into the ore veins completely out of compulsion. OCD may be a disability, but that doesn't mean it's not profitable. And when you move on to making pal metal, farming the essence is unbelievably easy. 
just throw as many carrying capacity pals into your party as humanly possible and go on a dungeon crawl. Each cave will have a metric ass ton of these essence veins just ready to go. Crawling around in the sun to find palladium shards is for the weak and for the infirm. Real trainers gather several hundred just by walking through a dungeon with a pickaxe. Third, you might notice that your guns don't do jack shit to the later bosses in the game. Why? Because you're still using the level 1 version of your weapons. Nice rifle, nerd. Did you find that armor too when you were dumpster diving? If you're tired of slumming it up in front of the Lovenders, there's only one solution. Hunt down these pals and capture them. Every time you do this, they have a chance of dropping a legendary schematic. And if they don't, you're not completely out of luck. Because just like in Catholicism, everyone gets a second chance. Everything runs out of orifices to search eventually, and if recycling them doesn't get you the results you're after, just rinse and repeat. I've put a list on screen of the legendary schematics and where to find them. They'll also be in the description below. And fourth, eventually you'll have the ability to start making bullets. My advice? Don't. By the time you're level 40, making money becomes something you do by complete accident. Almost everything the merchants carry sucks. Stop hoarding your gold and drop 85% of your income on ammo like a real American. It's what the Founding Fathers intended. The only exception to this is rockets, which can be crafted for an exorbitant amount of resources or found by hunting poachers in the desert. Also, it does not take long to discover that you are not alone on this island. It's not just great value brand pocket monsters that are looking for you. Your fellow man has taken up arms and they've decided anything that moves and doesn't look quite like them no longer qualifies for human rights. These are collections of people with a concerning amount of firepower and an even greater number of mental disorders. In PAL World, you have a variety of different enemy factions with their own styles, war gear, and environments. These factions are, in no particular order, Wish Brand Team Rocket, Historically Accurate PETA, the CIA, and the LAPD. Each of these groups are different and unique in their own special way, but they all have a few things in common. They don't like you or your face. They don't like your pals or your base. And if you find their homes, they'll often have a random pal locked away in the town square just waiting to join your team. I'm not gonna lie, the humans in this game are fucking trash. That includes the ones you can buy shit from. They all have things that make them feel unique, but it's mostly surface level. I am ah! More enemy variety with more abilities would be great. Mostly because then I'd have a reason to recruit them for my labor force. As it stands, their only real use is to sell them for their holes and their organs. Overall, I do enjoy this game. However, I do have a few criticisms. Number one, this game can't be paused in single player. This is inexcusable, and having to return to the title screen every time I have to leave my desk makes me mistreat my employees. Number two, the dungeons in this game are ass. They're all more or less the same, they just get a different coat of paint depending on what biome you're in. Sometimes, rare pals will spawn here. Other times, you'll just find groups of humans that you get to waste ammo on. The bosses in these caves are spawned entirely through RNG, and you won't know what you're spending time and resources working towards until you get to the very end. Which is usually extremely disappointing. Number three, the default world settings are dog shit. It doesn't take long for food and shelter to be constantly available. Making my character or their pals start to starve after five minutes of walking isn't challenging. It's just fucking annoying. And fun fact, this game launched with a bug that made it so leveling your capture rate actually made your PAL spheres worse. The developers fixed this and made it work as intended. And even after this, it's still trash. Number four, this game is in early access and it shows. There's no shortage of bugs, some of which can be borderline game-breaking. The developers have been fixing these, but I'll still find one from time to time. Pro tip, turn off dropping your items whenever you die. I know it sounds cheap, but trust me, after you clip through the world a couple of times and die in a way that makes it so you can't get your stuff back, you're gonna get real tired of that real quick. And lastly, I need more of this game. I'm out of bosses to kill, I have almost no pals left to catch, and I have all the gear I want. I need more. 
I get that things like bug fixes are more important than letting me go to this island, but at the same time, fuck you, let me explore the big tree place. I need more things to do. And if you don't give me what I want, I will start force breeding my pals for fun. There is a lot more I could cover in this game, but I'd like to get this video out before Jesus rises from his grave to scatter chocolate around for all the Gentile children. Pal World has a lot of other mechanics that help make the game more interesting, but they're a collection of little things. And if it doesn't involve explosions or mass-producing record profits, then I don't have the time to ramble about them. Either way, I recommend this game. It's a lot of fun, and I wouldn't blame you if you wanted to wait until it was closer to being finished before you picked it up. This video, however, is finished, and I thank you for watching it. If you liked what you saw, remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. A huge thanks to my Patreon backers for their endless support. You're the royalty-free penguins that keep this assembly line rolling. More content on the way, so stay tuned. Thank you all again, and I'll see you all next time.